Hello, uh, this is uh, Professor Uma Rao from RV College of Engineering. And um, in this session, uh, we will be discussing something about maintenance and uh, reliability of the power system. So first of all, the components of the system like transformers, generators, transmission lines, etc. They have to be maintained periodically. So when it comes to maintenance, uh, the most simple form of maintenance is what we call as breakdown maintenance. That means when an equipment fails, you maintain it. So this can lead to a lot of problems because sometimes the equipment may continue operating under low efficiency conditions and may break down only when it is beyond repair. Okay. And you may not be prepared for the breakdown. You don't know when the breakdown occurs. So an alternative to this is what we call as scheduled maintenance. That means periodically you maintain schedule and maintain the equipment. It's just like how you service your vehicles. So every six months, the vehicle is sent for servicing. Doesn't mean that it's not running. Okay. So whatever small problems are there, they are rectified. So this uh, scheduled maintenance will go a long way to improve the life of the uh, equipment and uh, also prevent too much of damage and impact when the equipment fails. Okay. So some of the major uh, uh, issues are uh, high reliability requirement of power system operation is necessary when you do generator maintenance because when a generator is removed for maintenance, you have to make for alternative uh, arrangements for that power supply. And so some redundancy has to be there. Some reserve has to be there in the uh, system. And uh, the other major challenge is the large size of modern grids. So modern grids are really large and uh, that has an impact on the scheduling. And normally because of cost constraints, uh, we operate with low reserve margins. So this would create problems when equipment are outaged or uh, removed for service. And uh, today in modern grids, because of the nature of the loads, sudden peak demands come on the system and this would uh, render you know your scheduling for maintenance uh, difficult uh, task and to become more complex because uh, during the maintenance you may be able to meet the base load but what about the sudden peak load which occurs you may not be able to maintain it so that is another problem and uh, insufficient supply being uh, which may be increased during the scheduled maintenance outages and of course cost everything involved is the cost so these are some issues which have to be borne in mind when the system is uh, maintained. So a, a desirable maintenance schedule should achieve the following. It should increase the reliability and benefits to the power system. So what economic benefit you get by maintenance should be more than the cost of the breakdown or the, what you're going to spend for the maintenance. And it should lead to an increase in the lifetime of the compensation. And it should either reduce or postpone installations of highly capital intensive new units. That's the whole thing why we maintain. Why do you go on servicing your car? Because you don't want to invest on a new car, right? So that's why you, do, you go to a periodic uh, service. And we say, you know, even after 10 years, my car is in very good condition. And because I have maintained it so well, that's the meaning. You know, so you should be post that does does that mean that your car you will go on forever? No, but you are postponed by not maintaining you may your equipment will break down sooner. Okay. And when it comes to reliability. So reliability has uh, in the power system context. It has two uh, meanings. One is the adequacy. That is how adequate is it? Is my supply able to meet the demand? That is called as adequate. Is it adequate? And the second one is security. So we discussed uh, security aspects. So to build this adequacy and uh, security, we have to invest money because I have to build redundancy, right? 
so if my if my demand is say uh, you know 10000 megawatt and i have generation exactly 10000 megawatt then i am not prepared i don't have any reserve right so if i have all lines without any parallel lines and all that then i have no scope if one line gets outaged then immediately there will be an overloading condition so without redundancy the reliability of the system is definitely reduced so i have to build redundancy i have to build control equipment i may use or i may not use please remember the contingency may occur or may not occur so building reliability costs money okay so cost is of two types one is how much money you have to spend to make the system reliable that is one thing the second cost you have to think was if i don't make the system reliable then what is the cost i am going to pay okay so i have a generator so i don't you know i don't maintain it i don't spend any money on building redundancy or in maintaining the generator so when the generator fails i'll have a cost incurred the cost could be in terms of loss of load or the cost could be in terms of investment on a new generator right this is one type of cost on the other type of cost to build redundancy i may have invested on a smaller generator as a reserve and i periodically go for an annual maintenance of this generator so re building reliability also costs so now let us just look at this curve right so maintenance cost as the reliable if the reliability is uh, you know as you want more and more reliability right the maintenance cost will go up the, so the better you maintain more reliable the system becomes so your cost will maintenance cost will go up okay so that is what this green curve tells so as i make my system more and more reliable my maintenance cost will go up right and as the reliability increases my reliability cost will come down reliability cost means the cost incurred when the system is not reliable because it is not reliable what is the cost incurred yeah obviously a very reliable system you spend more money on making it reliable and less money on if it fails so it is a trade off for example simple what is my reliable what is my re reliability cost for uh, frequent power outages i must have a backup okay i must have a backup i must invest on a dg set or on an inverter so that is the meaning of reliability costs so as the system becomes more reliable the reliability cost will reduce but the maintenance cost will go up so my total cost will be sum of the two right so now let us see here if a system is Uh, reliability is low reliability is low then what happens uh, the it, that, that means what if the reliability is low means it is prone to frequent breakdowns and not uh, you know functional all the time so i have to spend more cost because of breakdowns so this cost is very high but my maintenance cost is low obviously because my reliability is low now let us so the operating cost is very high reliability cost maintenance cost is low now let me take the way other end the other end okay so i i make a very reliable system then my maintenance cost is very high and yes the breakdown cost is low because the system is very reliable it is not break down okay let us take a very simple example say you are buying a mobile right you have mobiles in the market starting from 2000 smartphones starting from 2000 to 1 lakh right so if you go to the market and buy a small mobile of 2000 rupees or 3000 rupees then it may it may not last you more than 6 months okay so you have to immediately replace it that is your reliability cost it's not very reliable and it may not have all the features okay on the other hand let us say you go for an iphone um, 12 max pro or something like that you will be paying 1 lakh okay very reliable very good features but can you afford 1 lakh very high cost so what do you do you go for an in between mobile which is reasonably priced and you know which which is reliable also that's what it is like so the total cost is the sum of these two and uh, if you uh, plot that it would look like this blue curve so there is a minimum cost okay 
like your trade off in between a 2000 rupee uh, mobile and a 1 lakh mobile and that is the optimum cost and that is the amount of reliability you have to build it's not a magic number it's not a magic number it will depend on your components on the life of your equipment how long your grid has been there how long are the components what's the age of the transformer what's the age of the generators the transmission lines how the load has expanded so many parameters so you have to take a careful take on how much reliability and redundancy you should build into the system to have enough of security okay now when it comes to uh, reliability again you have uh, what are, what is called as a bathtub curve okay so now let let me take this green flat line so here i have constant failure rates over a period of time okay so let us say when i buy my car every you know once in six months i have some problem with the brake so whether it is a first year second year third year every six months i have a problem okay that is a constant uh, you know, failure rate uh, on the other hand on the other hand what do i have if i uh, take a product so i have an early infant mortality failure in the beginning the failures may be more the product may not be used and you know some parts may be uh, vulnerable and you may have to service it and then it settles down and the mortality failure rate will come down as the product is seasoned over time okay now what about wear out failures wear out is very word wear out means by using it by using it so the more you use you know after a very long time the possibility of failure will increase obviously very old equipment fail more often than new equipment okay so i have three types of failures one is a constant random failure that means anything can fail any time that is one some constant factor i assume then an early infant mortality failure which is there in every product and a wear out failure which is there in every product so these three are there for all the products for all the products okay so what does this mean at any period of time my product can fail either because of you know the product lifetime or because of the wear and tear of the product or because of some random uh, failure which occurs so if i uh, take into cognizance all these failures i get this famous blue curve which is called as the bath tub curve okay bath tub curve so because it looks like a tub it looks like a tub so what does this mean how do you interpret it this is a very standard curve in reliability for any product it's not for a particular product and the same thing holds good for power systems because our power system is an integration of so many products so in the initial period after installation the failure rate will decrease okay uh, for some time so in the initial period what will happen this will be because of the mortality rate it will decrease and then it will flatten out more or less flatten out over a pa large part of the life of the equipment it will be constant okay then towards the later end of the life of the equipment the again the failure rate will go up this is mostly because of the wear wear and tear so in the initial it's because of the mortality rate and in the later stage it is because of the wear and tear and in between it would be more or less constant so this is how the reliability curve looks like so each of the region you can it's all probability that's all reliability is all about probability okay because you can never say when exactly a product will fail impossible to tell so each region you can express it as a probability or distribution function uh, commonly given by this uh, k is a constant t to the power of alpha minus 1 alpha is also a constant and lambda is the failure rate so you'll have different failure rates for different equipment and the failure rate can be updated based on the age of the uh, equipment also and uh, when it comes to reliability we talk of outages we have already seen what is the meaning of an outage now an outage may or may not cause an outage of the full power system 
okay it may cause or may not cause it may not even cause an interruption so an interruption is a state where some part of the load is shed so all this will depend on how much of redundancy you have built into the system how much of redundancy you have built into the system let us say the lightning strike strikes a line and the line breakers open the line so immediately what will happen the power will be redistributed to other interconnected lines now if you have planned well then this will not lead to a major problem but if you have not planned well this redistribution can cause a lot of overloading in other lines and they may also trip and so many lines may trip and you may have loss of load okay so that is the meaning of outage so how outages affect the reliability then uh, in reliability assessment we have what is called as the markov's process so the markov's process actually tells you uh, how you can uh, know whether a product is reliable or not throughout its life history so for this the life of the equipment is divided into a, what we call as a two state model the uptime and the downtime the up and down state the up state is when the product is up and functioning as it should function and down is when it cannot function okay so it is represented by a zero and a one or a one and a zero either way since it's binary one of them is a zero and the other one is a one so when the component fails you say there is a transition from up to down because it is functioning and then it fails so i am transiting from up where it is functioning to down where it is not functioning similarly after you repair from down you go to up so maintenance and repair you know they take a product from down state to up state and a breakdown takes a product from up state to down state so reliability assessment depends on how much of up state you have and how much of down state you have or operating time and down time so this is important and between failures how much of time is elapsed how much of time is elapsed so all these are taken into account in reliability uh, studies so now a set of random variables uh, ordered in a particular sequence is called as a stochastic process so in power systems the state space is discrete because every component is either yes or no functioning or not functioning you know that can, it, it cannot be uh, you can't say a, a circuit breaker functions partially no a circuit breaker either functions or it doesn't function a transformer is either energized or not energized a line is either in operation or it is outaged a generator is supplying load or it has outaged so in power systems the state space is discrete okay you cannot say the generator is partially up no it's up or down right but the probability is continuous that means the probability of the transformer failing is continuous it's not discrete you can't say it is either it will fail or it will not fail no you can't say that so the probability is uh, continuous okay so in uh, in such cases we define some things one is very popular in reliability is what we call as mttf mean time to failure so let us say a generator outage occurs due to some reasons uh, five times over a period of 3 years right so what is the average time between failures five times over 3 years is the data you have so per failure it will be 3 by 5 years so in 3 years you have five outages so how many you will have in one year you can take or what is the time between two failures you can do it so mean time to failure means once the generator is up or any component is up what is the operating time it will have before it goes down so a transition from up to down this is called as the mean time to failure it's also called as the expected survival time then you have one by it's denoted by one by lambda then you have one by mu which is the repair rate where mu is the mean downtime mean downtime 
Okay. So how much time it is down, how much time it is up. So if you look at the state space model, very simply, you can uh, show it like this. So zero state is shown as up and one state as down. You can show vice versa, no problem. So from up state to down state is lambda. That is mean time for failure. And down to up is mu, how much time it takes up, okay? So P0T is the probability that the component is in state zero at time T. That means it is up. And P1 of T is the probability that it is down at time T. Okay. So the reliability is defined as POT. That means what is the probability of the component functioning? So this is a very standard expression in uh, reliability and probability studies. So it is given by mu by lambda plus mu plus lambda e to the power of minus lambda plus mu t divided by lambda plus mu. And similarly, you can get P1 of t. So these two probabilities are evaluated to uh, evaluate the reliability of the system. Now with respect, so this is general for any product. Now specifically with respect to power systems, there are two important indices. The first index for reliability is loss of load probability. That means what is the probability that my load is lost? That means my load is shed. Now every generator outage may not cause a load shedding. Every generator outage may not cause a load shedding, right? So we need to assess this. What is the probability? And we have to prepare for it. So this outage to Evaluate this loss of load probability. We need two parameters. The first is I need a list of all the generating units which are likely to cause a loss of load with their forced outage rate. Okay, what is their outage rate? That is the first information needed. You can get it from statistics. You can get it from statistics. Then I need list of forecasted daily peak loads for at least a period of one year. What is the peak load I expect? The reason is I have a certain generation, right? I know a part of it may be outaged because, you know, I, I may have four units and one unit if there is an outage. Can it meet my peak? That's what I want to see, right? So now if an outage O of K has a probability pk of occurrence, right? It has a probability pk of occurrence. And if due to this outage, the peak load cannot be supplied for rk days, it cannot be supplied for rk days, the probability of loss of load is given by ok into rk days, right? So one outage, a forced outage, is going to, it has some probability of occurrence, Right? And when this occurs, my loss of load may occur for RK days. So when I multiply, when I take the product, I will get the loss of probability for that particular outage. And when I sum it up over all the outage, I get so many days per year. So this is one important parameter to indicate the reliability of a system. Now this itself doesn't, probability of outage doesn't tell you how frequently there is an outage or what is the duration of each outage. Both are important. Both are important. So uh, the frequency of an encountering an upstate is given by R lambda, okay, where R is the reliability of the unit and the frequency F2 of encouraging an outage, that means a particular product being down is given by Q into mu, where Q is the unreliability of the unit. So these two are important and based on this we can assess the reliability of the system. Let us take a very simple example. You can easily understand. Supposing I have a radial system which consists of a transformer and a distributor of half a kilometer length. Now I am given that the failure rate for the transformer is 0.6 failures per year, right? 
you can also get it as for you for you can also give the this thing as data as what is the time for one failure between two that is the time between two failures that also you can say normally this is how we give it so 0.6 failures per year and the failure rate of the distributor is eight failures per kilometer per year so for a one kilometer distributor the distributor the failure is eight per year okay and the mean time of uptime is five hours for downtime is five hours for the transformer and four hours for the distributor so uh, this mu is the downtime what is the downtime so find lambda of the system the downtime per outage and the total outage time per year very simple what is my failure rate so the transformer is 0.6 failures per year okay 0.6 plus the distributor is eight failures per kilometer i have half a kilometer so it will be four four failures so it will be 4.6 outages per year i can expect in the system okay so in the system i can expect 4.6 outages per year both due to the transformer and the distributor so you can see that as you add more and more components this failure rate will increase that's why in reliability larger the systems the reliability will reduce because there are more com components that can fail okay fine what is the downtime total downtime so the downtime for each failure of the transformer is 5 hours for each failure it is 5 hours i have 0.6 failures per year so it is 0.6 into 5 okay plus uh and i have four outages for the distributor and each outage is of mean downtime is 4 hours so i can expect 4 into 4 16 so this is the total number of hours for how many outages for 4.6 outages so if i divide by 4.6 i will get it as 4.13 hours per outage if i multiply by what is the numerator the numerator is hours per year so hours per year i have multiplied by outages per year okay so i can get hours per outage so the total outage time you can represent it as 19 hours per year okay so these are all the different ways you can uh, tell the life of the product and how reliable the system is obviously the bigger lamp the lambda better it is that means less so how many failures per year so if lambda is large means more failures per year so lambda should be less one by lambda one by lambda that is the mean time between failures should be large okay downtime also should be small that means the product should be quickly repairable thank you